you know, our last video isn't doing too great for some reason. Mm, I wonder why. Perhaps it was a little bit disgusting? Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, maybe you're right. I think we need to dial things back a little bit. Cover something on the opposite end of the spectrum. What'd you have in mind? Mm, how about a kid's game? Who's gonna want to watch that? Children. On YouTube? Yeah, man, this place is crawling with kids who have an unlimited amount of time to spend watching mundane shit. Uh, it's either this or we become a slime channel. That wouldn't be so bad. I'm sure there's money in it. I hate myself. Come on, I, I think I know a good one to start with. Well, uh, a few, actually. Oh yeah? Like what? Uh, you're probably not going to like them. So what am I looking at? It's the classic children's video game mascot McGee. I've never heard of this. John, sometimes I get the feeling that you're not a true gamer. McGee was a long-running series of software released from the late 80s to mid-90s that was targeted towards kindergartners, preschoolers, and toddlers. They were sold through mail order by a company called Lawrence Productions. The series was highly praised on all fronts by one American gaming magazine for its ease of use and understanding, simple charm, incredible graphics, and realistic sound effects. Did they review children's games often? Yeah, they did a whole column on it. Uh, I guess when you're an early 90s PC gaming magazine, there's only so many times you can review the new Commander Keen. Commander Keen. Hey, if these proto-professional pro gaming journalists say they're good, then they're good. Alright, fine, let's try it. The first game in the series, simply titled McGee, was released in 1989 for Amiga and DOS-based PCs. This looks and sounds like shit! What is he, starting up like an industrial combine? <laughs> What's of that? Yeah, the generator's running, Mom. <laughs> You'll never know what I just did in here. The goal in this game, and any McGee game, is that... Well, there isn't one. Each screen presents four different clickable tiles at the bottom of the screen. These are used to either interact with objects or move to a new area. This is the gameplay. It's kind of like a David Cage production. The game begins with McGee, looking noticeably more like a lumbering giant than he did in the intro, waking up in the morning. He's a fucking giant. <laughs> Gee, I'm sleepy. <laughs> He's guarding the bridge all night. Upon leaving the bedroom, we're able to go to the bathroom, the parents' bedroom, or downstairs. Being that it is first thing in the morning, we must go take a shit. Finally, you're getting down to the real features of this game. A shitting mechanic. It's a bold move. A BM, if you will. Uh, no. Luckily not. Look at that. Oh. Look at that. Get out. Oh, you're, oh you're, you're trying to watch me take a shit? Get the fuck out. You freak, you fucking freak. McGee kicks you out of the bathroom before having your name added to a watch list. Wouldn't be the first time. Mother is next on her clicking spree. Mama McGee is trying to sleep off last night's coding binge. It's proving a difficult task when McGee won't stop fucking with everything. Turn that off. <laughs> I'm gonna lock you under the sink again. <laughs> Does she get up at any point? Eh, not till 4 usually. Oh, I get it. McGee is actually a 28-year-old neckbeard, still living with his disappointed parents that try to ignore him as much as possible. Eh, that's a valid headcanon. After that, it's time to head downstairs. We watch as McGee enjoys some high-quality children's morning television. And then he does this with the rug. Next, it's to the kitchen. We feed our dog a bone and watch as he devours the entire thing in one bite. Okay, Noah, yeah, I get it. It's a weird, obscure, low-budget kids game. We've played through nearly the entire thing, so like, what's the actual joke here? They were making like a bunch of porn games, or were they were like a Russian money laundering front or something? Well, uh, no. Uh, quite the opposite, actually. The company behind McGee, Lawrence Productions, uh, seems to have a pretty squeaky clean history, even though that history is next to impossible to find. Their software division released nothing but decently received, yet obscure educational and edutainment software for over a decade. They did a series of word puzzle games under the name Mind Castle, as well as a passable Oregon Trail clone. Nothing mind-blowing at all, but they would have passed the time in the middle school computer lab pretty well. Right, but why are we talking about them? I mean, there doesn't seem to be anything noteworthy about any of this. That's the thing, though. This game and the company that made it are almost lost to time. Hell, even the ROM for this game on Internet Archive barely has 30 views. That's interesting from a historical perspective. It's like opening a time capsule. So what's Lawrence Productions doing these days? Well, they went out of business sometime in the mid-2000s, but using the Wayback Machine, we're able to view their website as it was in the mid-90s. We don't get much information besides a few snippets from reviews and forms to order them through the mail. Man, you have to miss that Web 1.0 design aesthetic. 
Yeah, there's some strange design choices to be sure. I hate when a company website refers to their employees as our family. Yeah, they had quite a few employees. Uh, maybe the family can give us a little more information. Let's send our lady in HR here an email. She's the only one that has a non copy serve address anyway. So there's no reviews online of these games? Nope. Not that I can find anyway. Just this single Reddit post from a few years ago of someone trying to figure out what the game was after remembering it vaguely from their childhood. Like trying to uncover a repressed memory. Hi, sorry if this is the wrong sub, but this has been on the tip of my tongue for years, and I just really need someone to help me out. I have really vague memories of this random old educational game that was on Windows 95 or maybe just DOS. You played as this little blonde toddler, wandering around different environments like your house, a farm, etc. Clicking on things would give a random action or animation. There wasn't much gameplay, but I remember it always enthralled me for whatever reason when I was little. I can't remember the name of this thing. I believe it may have been some kind of shareware. I mean, I tried asking my dad whose computer I played on back then, and he said he had no idea what I was talking about. Definitely one of the McGee games. Really obscure series, I'm honestly surprised someone else remembers it. Probably was shareware at some point, but I had a copy on CD of three of the games when I was younger. I remember having a meltdown when it went missing. Love those games. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for posting this. You people have no idea what these games mean to me. When I was about five years old, things were not good with my family. My parents were on the tail end of a marriage that had been in a downward spiral for years. Dad had either just been fired or demoted at work. I can't remember. I always had this notion that money was tight. Mom had just agreed to take in my grandfather, her dad, who had rapidly developing Alzheimer's which obviously was another source of arguments between them. I think my dad kind of thought of him as another mouth to feed, but I know now from talking about it with my family that Grandpa received a social security check or a pension or something like that, and we did need it. These are some of my first memories. The first day that Grandpa came to live with us, when he was still somewhat lucid, he came into the living room saying he had a gift for me. I guess my mom had mentioned that dad had started letting me play around on his old desktop. He pulls out a copy of the McGee 3 game collection from a plastic bag. I imagine he picked it up during one of his last trips to Walmart with my mom. It was a really nice gesture, and uh, I was happy to have something new to play. I remember him joking that I looked just like the kid on the case. Little chubby-cheeked, blonde-haired boy, just like you, he would say. I fell in love with the games on that disc. I played them beginning to end, over and over. There, uh, there wasn't a lot of gameplay, so I would just do all the animations and start it over. I guess it kind of slowly became a coping mechanism. Whenever mom and dad would start arguing, or later, whenever grandpa would start having a violent fit, I would always find myself cutting it on to escape from what was happening around me. Escaping to a bright, idyllic world where everything was calm and peaceful. Maybe it was unhealthy. I don't know, but I'm not sure how else I would have mentally coped with everything, being that young. Next up is canonical sequel Katie's Farm. Who the fuck is Katie? I want McGee! I'm a McGee stan! She's his cousin, McGee is still there. Uh, they had to bring Katie in to keep the lore fresh. Alright, I get it. Let's start it up. Uh, breaker, farm. breaker, this is Katie. <laughs> okay, a pig. Alright. Get the pig. <laughs> <laughs> is that a greeting or a warning? I'm not sure. Maybe that pig is feeling a little tense since he saw a hungry child giant show up. Yeah, there must be something up with our sound emulation. Uh, much like the first game, we're presented with a few tiles to click on to take us to different places around Katie's farm. It seems like we're getting a bit more content in this game, with nearly double the screens of the last game. See, now we're talking about getting our money's worth. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I mean, there's still not much to do. 
I'm not even sure when we get a gun. Uh, we could fuck around with a scarecrow. Kitty is somehow smugger looking than McGee. It runs in the family. And now it's time to forage for berries to feed the family. If only greedy fat face McGee didn't eat all of them. Now it's time to head to the pond to play with wild animals. I'm noticing a theme of uninvolved guardians in these games. After that, it's time to head into the barn to jump into some hay bales that are actually made out of glass. <laughs> <laughs> my glass prop! Oh my god. This game is taking every opportunity it can to scream at us. After that, our boy McGee gets absolutely owned by a shot of cow milk to the face. Please don't give me Sogswing flashbacks. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you got fucked, McGee, you little bitch. It's over to the chicken poop where we see McGee about to end a young chick's life before it's even began. Lastly, it's over to the stables where we see a super buff horse with a long workout regimen. Which brings Katie's farm to an end. Well, we could try to 100% it to get the best ending, but I don't know if we have time for that right now. Yeah, save it for another video. Moving on. Yeah, I'd forgotten about these too. I remember on our old IBM we had back in 95 or 96, I had the CD with three games on it. I don't know if I'm remembering this right, but like a lot of you, I was pretty young. But when you're in the farmhouse, I believe, you could just pick up the phone and he'll start dialing numbers. Most of the time nobody answers, or it just says the weather or something. I remember one time my sister and I were playing it, clicked on the phone, and it rang for like a really long time. Like two or three times longer than it normally rings. Then you just hear like a very quiet whining or moaning on the other end kind of baby cry sounding so it could have been like an unused sound effect or something i don't know but this could just also be like a distorted childhood memory of something totally normal no no i, I remember the phone too I, I never had the groaning thing happen but i distinctly remember getting something pretty fucking weird happening just like your experience it rang for way too long and then i started hearing like a sonar ping like this high-pitched little ding ding for a few seconds and then it was over. I have to assume this is like some leftover assets from the devs other project that got accidentally left in or a clip they never finished. It didn't freak me out as a kid, I always thought it was weird, I just couldn't articulate it before. One morning, probably two or three weeks before Grandpa died, he had another episode. Normally they would start by my mom or dad trying to give him his medication. They'd tell him to take it, and he would just ignore them. So they would drop the pill in a glass of water and try to make him drink it. He would just start punching, kicking. He even bit my mom once. I, I just remember crying and my parents screaming at him. Sometimes they would just give up and Grandpa would fall asleep in his chair. That morning I was sitting on the couch in the living room. My dad was next to me and Grandpa on the recliner in the far side of the room. My mom had just woken up, and she was walking into the room to join us. I said, Good morning, Mommy. The words were still clear in my head. Before Mom could return my good morning, Grandpa was screaming at the top of his lungs. He wasn't angry, like when they would try to get him to take his pills. He seemed more frightened than anything. He looked at me with these big, oblong eyes. Maybe it's my memory exaggerating it, but... They looked more like the eyes of like a gorilla, just almost human. You know those old photos of shell-shocked soldiers from World War One? Kind of like that. Blank, black, and unfocused. He was just screaming total nonsense, complete gibberish. Um, what I imagine speaking in tongues sounds like. My dad shot up from the couch and went over to him and. My mom, freaking out, called an ambulance. I remember walking back into my dad's office and booting up McGee with them screaming in the living room. I don't remember a lot after that. I guess they sedated him and he fell asleep. I don't think I cried. I just remember feeling totally detached from the situation.
The final game in the trilogy, McGee at the Fun Fair, was released in 1991. We see the lore expand even further as McGee's best friend Tony is introduced, as well as McGee's long absent father. Did they replace the mom? Yeah, he didn't have much choice. The other mom was still asleep. As soon as we step into the fair, we're greeted by an incredibly talented caricature artist. Then it's over to the clearing where we are serenaded by some beautifully played guitar scales. That's Joni Mitchell. That's Joni Mitchell and her friend, Clown. <laughs> oh, sounds great. A clown creates some wonderful balloon animals. Or hot dogs, I'm not sure. After that, we head to a different area for the Arts Showcase. Holy shit, is that CCR? We listen to that jaunty loop for a moment before letting a friendly juggler steal our youth away. That's all well and good, Noah, but tell me, does this game have a stoned car in it? Why, yes it does. You're in luck. Kerchaw, man. We play on the playground for a bit before deciding to finish off our trip to the fun fair with a treat. Wow, what a trilogy. You know, I'll admit it. I thought this was kind of a stupid idea at first, but... Now I can't help but respect these games. I mean, they're dead simple, there's really no gameplay at all. But they kind of harken back to the childlike sense of wonder that we all had, when we didn't have any worries in the world, and we were much more easily impressed. Yeah, I mean, these games are pretty goofy, but there's something really great about them too. They just remind you of being a kid. It's really comforting. Someone could check to see if this is still in the ROMs online. Maybe we all played some glitched out haunts at early version. Started mining through the files when people started chiming in on this thread. BRB. My grandpa's last moments were spent laying on the bathroom floor. He fell trying to get off the toilet by himself. He was always stubborn, but I think the Alzheimer's made it worse. I don't think he realized my parents were trying to help him most of the time. I was in my room, and I heard a bunch of shit falling off the shelves. A loud thump from the bathroom and a low, drawn-out groaning voice. He fell face flat and cracked his head on the tile. I could see my dad half sprint to the bathroom door and bang on it, shouting his name. Grandpa must have locked it. Dad tried to force the door open with his shoulder, but he couldn't, so Mom runs up with the key. I run to the doorway and, looking past my parents, I see him laying on his forehead, half on the floor and half on the toilet in a pool of his own blood. His arms were frozen, stretched out wide, and he was making this horrible snoring sound. Dad's just cursing and running around like crazy. He turned around and shouted at me to get in my room. I started to cry. He had never really yelled at me like that before. I ran back around the corner into my room and he ran into the living room for the phone. I shuffled back into the bathroom. He convulsed, his arms moving up and down, his face covered in blood. His eyes moved up to catch me standing there. He stopped twitching for a moment and relaxed his position a little. Still looking right at me, he was either grimacing or smiling. In this muffled, almost teasing voice, he said, Hi, I'm McGee. That smile or scowl fell from his face. His eyes curled back into his head. His mouth was agape and he slumped down into his chest and froze. He was dead. I don't know if my parents saw his last moments or not. I kind of hope they didn't. I still question my memory about whether or not it even happened like that. All of that didn't even take two minutes. My mom was still on the phone and I don't think dad would have just left him there alone. I've had opportunities to ask about that day but always avoided it. I really don't want to bring up a memory like that. If you've ever lost somebody in that way, you'd understand that it's easier to just not talk about it. No matter how much you want to. So, 
from what I can see, there's no hidden sounds or assets in the files of these games that aren't immediately visible from just playing it. No weird developer trickery in a game made for toddlers, just people having bad memories. The next day, I took the McGee disc out of my dad's computer. I took it to the back of our house and smashed it with a rock into dozens of little pieces. I, I don't know why. I guess I blamed it for everything that had happened or it reminded me of it. I know you really can't explain the thought process of a child like that. Anyway, story over, I guess. I just wanted to thank you for bringing it back up in my mind, even if it was somewhat painful. It felt good to vent about it. While these games are a reminder of a bad time in my life, they're still really comforting somehow. Just like they were all the way back then. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. We uh, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I know it's a little bit different from what we usually make, and some of you might have even found it a little bit boring, but uh, if you stuck through till the end, well, this is something special for you. So, John, what have we got here? Sesame Street, Big Birds Hide and Speak. John, this, uh, this isn't right, is it? You're finally waking up. What, what are you talking about? I remember now, don't you? You don't remember his name? The accursed word that we once spoke without care? Think, Noah. Recall his face, the voice. Do you remember the television, the dog bones, the farm, the swine, Noah, the swine? Recollect their abject cries as they hiss and spat. He hears us. He'll be coming soon. He draws the lightning with a singular persistence. We were pawns this entire time. Noah, don't you get it? Burns production summons something dark, something hateful and intensely powerful. Well, they were, they were fools. They thought it would give them power. Arrogance! It manifested itself into a digital toy for children. To spread its tendrils to feed. To bring the entities from the fathomless depths that will bring upon us a cold destruction. Because of Commander Keen's release, its power was temporarily diminished. The eyes of man turning to another, leaving it sealed in the deep pocket of an artificial dimension. Pawns. We were less than pawns. This king is indifferent. Though, we will be slaves all the same. It hungers. The insects will come and our soil will flood with poison. I can feel the dark weight fastening itself upon me. We fed it! We gave it the power it needed to return once again. Human arrogance! Once again, prying in matters we have no capability to understand. We considered ourselves significant, even powerful. Arrogance. 
depth is always the result.